Look at that. This is going to be a very cool afternoon. It's Ruth Parkinson, and this amazing woman is Denmark's best, one of the best obstacle racers. Uh, we have Cecilia Thompson. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much for inviting me. How are you? I'm pretty good. Okay, so this is OCR. For those that don't know, what is OCR? OCR is obstacle course racing. It's a lot of technical trails, water and mud, and a lot of uh, technical and heavy obstacles thrown along the way. Okay, so today we're going to see the men's final and the women's final as well. It's going to be very exciting. Okay, yeah. awesome. So next we're going to see three obstacles which we believe are three toughest. Funniest. Yeah, <laughs> they're extremely hard to do. Um, so we sent Dave. Dave went to see the three obstacles. Look at this. So I am joined by one of Norway's top athletes in OCR racing, Julie Alexandra Warhanton. You're going to talk us through some of the most technically difficult obstacles at Red Bull Conquer the Castle. Yes. So first off, what's this one called? This is called the wings. And here it's really important to have some speed into the obstacle. Speed. And then you use the lower bar. Okay. And you jump from it. Leap it up to the outside. Yes, there. and reach for the top. <laughs> and here also it's... Uh, important if you use your foot because then it's easier to drag yourself up. Okay, let's give it a go. Yeah. Come on, grab it! No. Oh! Nice! And you use your foot! High five! <laughs> okay, so the second standout obstacle, the torture chamber. Yes. Any tips on this one? Yeah, grip strength, really important. And remember your feet, have them high, don't touch the ground. Okay. Why are you so fast? <laughs> It hurts my legs. Come on, Dave. It's so hard. <laughs> my foot's like stuck. Okay, so this is the grappling hook. Yeah, but wait to see what comes next. <laughs> Welcome to the log. What's the log? So here you need to swim with it around the Red Bull mark and go back. Are you not coming? No, I'm saving myself. Saving it on my own. And you're not finished yet. What? You need to go all the way. It's so hard. <laughs> nice. You know, credit to Dave. He actually jumped in the lake. <laughs> he did I was it. just standing there like... <laughs> and but it is it. really cold. It, is, yeah. it does look cold. Yeah. Right, so uh, let's recap uh, the event so far. So today, um, yeah. is there any surprises that you thought maybe someone was going to go through and they didn't? Or Yeah, we saw Katja earlier today. She was I, I thought she would be in the final, but she was struggling at the, the wings. Um, I don't know if it was too cold or too muddy or her forearms was too cold to, to do it, but um, that was a surprise to me that she's not there. But we see still Annika uh, and Magreta and Ida and uh, Julie. And they, they were some uh, some pretty good uh, run up okay. for, the, for the finals, yeah. The wings, were, look at that. I mean, yeah. this is quite a dangerous course as well as it being super fun. But the wings are really catch people out, don't they? And that's the new grappling hook that we built in as well. Yeah. I believe that was a game changer today as well, because uh, this is not a normal element in the obstacle course racing. So this was new to a lot of the guys and girls out there today. Okay. And uh, it just takes a lot of strength though, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially to get over them wings. See They're how they easy. go on and on and on, unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so the, the grappling hook as well, which has been changed today, of course. And after the grappling hook, you get up, and then over the, over there, you just see a big lake, and you're like, okay, yeah. great, now I've got to jump in the lake. They know by now, because the, the guys, this is actually the fourth, no, fifth round on yeah. the course they're doing now. Wow. So they've been in it fi four times before. So uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, because that might be a mental uh, element um, that you know what you're going into. Do you think you've sa they've saved any of their energy? Because at the same time, that's such a risk because you're going into each heat wanting to get through. But at the same time, you're like, okay, I'm got, do, you, do you put 90% in and save 10 for the final? Or? I'll say it depends on uh, who's in your heat. Because I could see that some of them, they were struggling a lot to get into the first or second place to go on to the next round. Mm. And some of them uh, found out that they were way uh, in a head lead. So, so I think they saved some energy for the finals. Okay, um, so what we're going to do now is move on to the men's finals. Um, I love the catapult as well. <laughs> That's <such a> good, <laughs> it's a really an obstacle. Um, I love that. Um, but yeah, so, so the men's final is happening. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on that? 
I think it's going to be a very strong competition out there because these are four very, very uh, strong athletes all around. Um, Nikolai is very fast. Uh, Leon is also very fast, but he's more technical. Um, Thibaut actually won this uh, European Championship this summer. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. together with the uh, OCR legend John Jonathan Alban. And uh, Jonas Dresner actually uh, podiumed uh, quite well this year as well. Does that make a big difference in your head, knowing that you're competing against someone that's won a competition not so long ago? I believe they are all in, yeah, racing their own race, and that's yeah. what you should do, because this is really all about the mental factor as well. But uh, yeah, I think that that'll have to get a little bit into your head. Okay, we just seen yeah. Nikolai uh, there earlier. Is he? Are you thinking he's the guy then? Nikolai? Yeah. He could easily be the guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go down the list then. We uh, have Nikolai, of course, Leon, uh, Tobo, and Jonas, and you're tipping Nikolai. I would say, yeah, but um, I saw him uh, throwing the, the rope, the, um, the grappling hook, yeah. uh, and he's, he's been challenged a bit there, uh, so that might change the game for him I today. I mean, he looks focused there. <laughs> he's What's he like as a person? Oh, he's such a nice person. He's, uh, he's always very calm. You can never see him um, freak out on anything, even though he had to stand on the same obstacles, trying over and over again for like half an hour that wouldn't that change this game at all okay so i guess for different competitors it works in different ways but for yeah. him it, it, it works being calm and collective and going yeah. through it quite chill i think he learns a lot from his last race and he's he's more like uh, got the um you win or you learn attitude okay yeah um and doing so many heats already going into the final right now are you going to stick with the same game plan that you've done in the past heats like maybe the same technique to get over the wings um and to move the boulders and uh, the grappling hook as well or are you going to try something new i think every t i know that nikolai is the kind of guy that every time he's done a course he, he goes back and see what worked and what didn't work and then he'll just um yeah wicked um let's speak about underdogs is there someone apart from Nikolai that you're thinking, you know what? You know what? I you don't might do it. I'm not sure you can say that any of these four guys are underdogs because yeah. they're very good competitors for the, the top of the podium today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is, and is there any specific obstacle that you feel like is going to be the one that gets them? I think it'll be the, the grappling hook. The grappling hook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I believe so because the wings will be hard for the women, but it's easy for all of the guys who saw that they were just flying right through it. Yeah. yeah. So it is a big difference between different skills in the men's race and the women's race. Yeah. Okay. Massive. Uh, yeah. Got you. Okay. Um, so coming up, we're going to go to uh, Dave, who uh, is going to be down with the racers to uh, start the race. What's going through their head right now, do you think? I think they're all preparing to race their own race. Right. And yeah, just focus on themselves. And you say that. What does that mean, running your own? I know that sounds it like a silly question. Yeah, no, no, not at all. It, um, it means that you should not have focus on your competitors. Uh, if Even if you ha you're far behind, you don't know what's happening. Nothing is finished until you cross that finish line. So you have to keep in mind that even though you might be 100 meters behind, yeah. the next ob obstacle might be hard for your competitor. Okay. So never lose it. That seems so tricky because you're yeah. focusing on yourself getting through every obstacle. Yeah. And in the back of your mind, it's like, hopefully, Nikolai's going to stumble on this yeah, one. That yeah. could overtake him. Yeah, so no, it's it is competitive nice. as much as <laughs> it is in your own, own head as well. The mental uh, part of it is is huge. Okay, it's and huge. what about That's getting a, a good factor. start? Because obviously we've got the, the building the barricade first, and then the, yeah. the ropes. Is that important getting off to a good lead? Knowing that these four guys are all very fast runners, it's very important. Yeah. Okay, wicked. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like it's time. Yeah. Let's go over to Dave, who's at the <laughs> starting line. Dave. Okay, so we have our athletes lined up and ready to race. Let's get this show on the road. First up, we have Nikolai Dam, followed swiftly by Liam Kafu. Next up, Thibaut Bubisher and Jonas Drescher. Our last but not our least man taking to this course. This is their fifth time on the OCR. Race, every time changing. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna to go to the race director who is gonna start off the race. What's going through their minds now? Are they ready? This is it, isn't it? I think they're ready, but I think so they're tired. This is actually, they've been doing this four times before. So they run this course of four kilometers, four times. That's actually 16 kilometers. Wow. And now they're out for even 
for more. Well, here we go. This is the men's final of the Red Bull Conquer the Castle. Uh, and to start off, we are going to build the barricades. Um, so right now, I think we just got a few technical difficulties with the camera, but at the moment, they're building the barricades. So which means they're going to use the hammer to knock down the large pegs, I believe. Yeah. Okay, amazing. And then they're going to go to uh, the ropes. Yeah, we can see the rope here. It's actually all about technique. Yeah. Uh, you have to spare your hands as much as possible. So you have to do a foot lock to get up there quickly and ring the bell, get back down and run as fast as you can. They are going so quick up there. Is it? Is it more to do with your feet rather than your hands on the rope? It's, it's, yeah, it's all about the feet, actually. This is the fastest I've seen them all day. Yeah, I get think this... Right. It's on now, isn't it? You can they tell know it's the final. This is the one. Wow. This is where they, they should focus. Okay, so at this point, and, and let's talk about cardio as well. Is it is it a big deal in, in OCR that you've got to be able to run four long distances? Yeah, well, actually, when I started for in 2015, you could easily pick up on the running part. Uh, but now they are all focusing, focusing so much on running. So they got fast. I know that these guys are running between 80 to 130 kilometers each week. That's a lot. And that's a just week. for practicing. Yeah, a week. Well, okay. Uh, that <laughs> makes me feel so lazy. Uh, and probably half of us <laughs> watching the show at the moment. Um, right, so we're going to move on to the battlefield now. Talk to us about the battlefield. What do they have to do? The battlefield, that's uh, like swarmed by a lot of mud. You get in, yeah. in the mud to your, to your stomach, actually. If you go in the thick mud, you can get stuck out there. So you have to, to they have to remember the path they used early on today to know which, which one is the best way to get around the thick mud. So there is actually, I know it sounds like, you know, if this is your first time watching OCR, you're probably thinking they have to run through mud, is that it? But there really is a technique to running through the mud. Yeah, you'll have to find out and figure out what way to, to take so you won't, uh, yeah, lose some s valuable seconds in there. Okay. And they're running, uh, oh, uh, they're running uh, onto some technical trails, some yeah. rocks and uh, trees and still some cold water. So Cecilia, you did this yesterday. How yeah. did you find uh, the battlefield? That was quite fun. I actually got stuck in the very thick mud and I was just oh. trying to, to move around <laughs> right. and, and the very nice girl said, try to go to the side. That's where it's not yeah. so thick. So uh, that was a good tip. Okay. And then after the battlefield, they are going to be running through the forest, uh, which again is quite a very technical route covered with yeah. trees. You've got rocks there as well uh, and sharp corners. Now yeah. on this, is your mind, you've got to really know what this you're doing. And, and this is where if you're a fast runner, you know that you can set your com competitors back. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, I I think these guys, because they are very fast, they'll they'll focus on this part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when it comes to the leaderboard now, are we yeah. way too early to, to that for it to mean way, anything? Way, way, way too early. Okay. Yeah. As I said earlier on, uh, nothing is really over till you cross the finish line, and they are right. way too far from the finish line okay. right now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and with the pillory as well, that's what they're going to move on to once they've gone through the forest. Uh, so the pillory is you're putting on a heavy wooden pillory uh, on the back and carrying it back and forth uh, over a 30 meter yeah. long track. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's like a yoki carry okay. uh, that you have to go back and yeah. forth with. Yeah. Let's just go over what we saw just a second ago. We saw all the guys go up the ropes and they've got to hit the bell as well. So it's not yeah. just right, you've got to hit the bell to, and I'm guessing that yeah. proves you've, you've done it and you've done it Exactly, exactly. Okay. So the officials can hear that you actually completed this off. Yeah. Oh. And now they're all running uh, into the forest. And next time we see them, they all look clean here. Yeah. New outfits, new shoes, <laughs> looking great. When we next see these lot, they are going to be full of mud. So be prepared, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, actually, I, I think these guys, they know that they have to clean up before they leave uh, the, the battlefield. They'll, have, they'll um, use their clean hands, so they have to clean up in the water. Right. So, yeah, because you, you'll need that for a good grip. Okay, look at that. That's a great shot of the castle that we're at. It's Iskot <laughs> Castle in Denmark, where we're broadcasting from. Um, also, they've got the castle wall that they've got to climb under, which is part of the forest as well. And yep. that's where they kind of get introduced to the water, I guess. Yeah. So, we're, yeah, this is where they'll uh, get into the water and get... It's very cold, yeah. but they can clean, as I said, clean up their hands. They have to uh, to be able to use the hands for the, a lot of uh, grip strengthening obstacles later on. And how important is it to be mindful of how wet your hands are, how muddy your forearms are? Because I know we were saying in the in the women's semis, yeah. uh, there was actually a competitor who had the... Yeah, neoprene on. Yeah. yeah, so what was that for? It, that's very important because you, uh, you need to have your forearms not too cold because if they get very cold, you lose your grip. Okay. And if you, you don't have the grip, you can complete the obstacles. Wow, so yeah. much to think. And they're yeah. all thinking about this as they're... They know the this. this yeah. 
Okay. See, OCR is incredibly difficult yeah. because, like, yeah, especially <laughs> on this course. Um, so, okay, the leaderboard is changing so often. Is this is this yeah, happening in OCR a lot? Yeah, yeah, this is very normal. Okay, um, we're gonna be at the treetop soon as well. Now, with the treetops, this is something. Did you get to do this yesterday? I was up there. It was not on the course yesterday, but I was up there just to check it out. Okay. And uh, it's very high. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not good with heights, but um, I, I think the game changer up here is that it's very slippery and they yeah. got wet feet. And bearing in mind, they're not the first to go up the treetop. No, they've it's been, been used all weekend. Yeah. I'm sure it's just got slippery and slipper, I guess. I believe so. Are you holding on to the rails as you're running over the, the treetops? I would say no, actually, but I saw that they did this today, and I think it's because it's so slippery. Okay, yeah. well, you can't, well, you have to hold on to them. Yeah, I think so. I saw they, a lot of the girls were using it uh, earlier, and I think that was the reason. Okay, yeah. cool. And there's no chance you can kind of... Is there any way you can dry off during the, the course? They've just gone through under no. the castle, so they've gone in the water. You can use all the elements, you see. If you see a tree, you can use the grass, you can no use way. the obstacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But normally, uh, if you haven't got your whole body underwater, you can use your shoulders or the back because that's uh, normally not as muddy or wet. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, right, we're going to go over to Dave now, who is at the treetops. <laughs> yeah, so I'm down here at the treetops, and I actually took the liberty of going for a little bit of a stroll up there this morning. And I have to say, there was two things that stood out to me. Number one was, it was very, very, very high. Add that in with the fact that it's like mega, mega slippy. It becomes an extremely difficult and intense part of the course. But these guys are running across, no problem, flying as they enter into the spiral staircase, which actually is nearly the most difficult part of the whole course. I think never mo they've got wet feet. They've got a lot ahead of them. They've got a lot behind them. It's a big mind challenge. I heard Cecilia talking about it. It's as much physical as it is mental. And right now, you can see there is two clear people ahead. However, we have two more fast approaching. This is a nail biter, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Cheers, Dave. Um, I love that. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say nail biter today. You beat me to it. Um, well, Nicolas in the lead. Are we surprised? Yeah. No. Okay. We talked about this, and he's really good at this. Uh, I think if uh, anyone's to beat him, it'll be around the, the grappling hook. Okay, so that's what we're kind of banking on. Because he, has, he, has he had a good history when it comes to throwing? I've heard rumours. He's uh, done pretty good all season and last season and the season before that. So, yeah, he, okay. he's really good. Cool. Uh, so coming up, our next obstacle uh, is the well. So with the well, you actually have to, we've changed it as well from when you did Yeah, that. we changed it from yesterday. They removed the steps that was inside it. Uh, so they have the rope to climb up. But I don't, I'm not sure if they'll use it. It'll, they'll just do a very high jump. It looks like they're coming up without using the rope at all. So you've got a climb inside and it's super narrow in there as well. It's not it's a lot super of narrow. No, no, not at all. Okay, so you've got to jump, get the rope, and then they're off. As you can see, Leon is not a tall guy, so I think this one is good for him. This is one of his right. obstacles, uh, as well with the with the um, uh, torture chamber. That's yeah. also a good one for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're seeing our leaders uh, just running through, and what a picture as well. You can see where we where we are today. The castle is amazing. It does feel like we're in uh, the 14th century. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Almost, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really are this, the castle. This is the story we're, go we're going to tell today. Yes, my favourite bit is coming up. Hopefully yeah. they're angry this afternoon. I believe they are. They've they been are? out here all day. It's cold and they've just been waiting. <laughs> they are angry now. <laughs> Right, we are coming to the shield. Now, the idea is you have to avoid uh, and run past some soldiers armed with shields. Yes, actual shields. Uh, and they're going to be blocking the way. Now, there does seem to be uh, a bit of uh, a gap between our, our contestants at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, Nikolai and uh, was that Leon a second? Yeah. They, they, they got a really good uh, lead from now. Okay. Um, yeah, the shield is coming up. My favorite part of OCR. <laughs> I love this bit. Yeah. Wait till you see it. Wait till you see it. Um, and, and at this point, we're, we're getting nearer towards halfway. Is there any kind of indication of our leaderboard so far? So we've got Nikolai on top, uh, the Bowl second, Leon third, then Jonas. Any 
you know, can we call it now? No, no not at all. It's no. it's way too soon still, and they are very close. You can see Nikolai and Tebow, they are very close to each other at the moment. Um, it all comes down to who's also a fast swimmer. We saw today that someone right. was struggling in the water. So, no, no, it's way too soon to tell. What's interesting as well is this is different between the, uh, the um, heats, because second means nothing and third means nothing fourth if you want to go for the win yeah whereas in the heat you just needed to be top two to go through exactly so i know they they didn't use as much energy early on because they yeah. know that they had to be number one or two and they um, i think they they felt like if, if they they had a pretty good lead they would spell themselves for for this one okay cecilia talk me through the wings because it's coming up yeah that's a fun one uh, as you saw earlier today oh they're coming there yeah they are that Look was pretty that. easy First that, time. That was so easy for them. And they're side by side actually doing it. So what's the idea with the wings? The, uh, you have to, this is like a small uh, plateau. You can jump on with one foot and you have to kick back with the other one and grab the, the top of the obstacles and pull yourself over. Okay. It sounds easy, but it's very hard. Oh, yeah. It's Red Bull. Exactly. <laughs> Right, uh, also we've got the grappling hook. Now this is where I'm a little bit worried for, should be we, we be worried for Nikolai? Worried about what? On the grappling hooks? Yeah, well, we saw him earlier struggling a little bit with it, but I think he might have found a technique by now. Um, but but okay. let's see if he's he's okay for this Here time. We go. I did hear the right-hand side of the wings is a lot easier. Yeah, I heard that too. I'm so not sure about that. Oh, you're not sure? No. Okay. I saw a lot of the girls earlier trying on the right-hand side, but then when they went to the left, that's when they succeeded. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's OCR rumors. <laughs> It does feel like first and second together and third and fourth are together. They're in two little groups at the moment. It looks like it, yeah. Do you think they're, they're, they're still playing their own game out here or do you feel like competition's got to them a bit? I think that these are professionals. I think they are uh, still running their own game. Got I you. talked to Nikolai last year just before the World Championship and I, I know that he's, that's what he's all about. Okay. Right, grappling hooks uh, is happening now and I believe they've both... Oh, they are in a little bit of trouble here. Um, getting oh, this over is that exciting. Hook, yeah. And then afterwards, they've got to do the log swim as well. So yeah. Not, it, yeah. Oh, so yeah, they're struggling there again. What is this again. like to do? I think now that it's the finals, I think they're a bit more stressed uh, than they were earlier because they knew that they there was a top two. Now it's just the one. Yeah, it's only yeah. the first one who, come, who crosses that finish line that counts. And we can't see it on a camera, but once you've gotten over that, is there a net in? I think, on the other side, that you have to climb back yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, and then you have to go back into the cold water. Uh, and they're throwing the log in front of them just to, sw yeah, like that, swim very fast, keep your hands clear and all. So, Cecilia, Oof. on a scale of cold to cold, how cold is the lake? Freezing. <laughs> No, it's very cold, but when you're, uh, the pulse is high and your adrenaline is kicking yeah. in, it's actually okay, you have to adapt to the water. And I know that this is part of their training. All uh, professional obstacle course races, they train, they doing the winter uh, bathing. Okay, yeah. bathing in freezing cold lake exactly. water. Only RCA, uh, OCR races. Right, this is getting quite close now. Yeah, as I said before, I think it, it'll come down to who's the fastest swimmer maybe today. Oh, yeah. So they've got to go around the Red Bull sign. Uh, and then once you've come back with the log, you put it back on the hill. You then you've got to go up quite a watery uh, or slippery. Um, yeah, it's muddy. How did you find that yesterday with the log? I think it was, it, 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 there's yeah, a net that you can walk up. But okay. uh, yeah, yeah, but that, and that made it easier, but it's still muddy up there. Right, got you. Um, after this as well, you've got the dun dun dun. I hate Your this word, favorite. torture chamber. <laughs> oh! Tried to do this yesterday as well. Really yeah. hard torture chamber. Yeah, but it's really it's hard. It, this is a favorite in the OCR racing. Really? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a like a low rig that you have to crawl under. You can use your feet and your arms if you want to, but you cannot touch the ground. Then you have to start over. And Cecilia, for the average person, you know that will go to the gym, say three times, three times, four times a week. What strength do you need for the torture chamber that's about to come up? Uh, this is all about upper body and your core because you have to keep your, your feet up at all time. Right. Um, and you have to go all the way. I know that yesterday you could use your feet the entire way through the, this uh, low rig, but today they removed some of the grips and replaced them with some even more difficult grips. They've made yeah. it even tougher. Yeah. I couldn't even do it yesterday. <laughs> um, right, let's go for the leaderboard, shall we? We had uh, Nikolai still on top, uh, then to Bo. 
Uh, yeah, he managed well. to do the, the grappling hook pretty good. So uh, I think he's so in the torture chamber now. Okay, he's in there now. It looks like a yeah. cage as well, doesn't it? And you have to go all the way, ring the bell, and then, yeah. So move, move with this as well, you can't touch the ground. Is that the idea? You cannot touch the ground at all. If you do that, you'll have to start all over. So. All over from the start? All over from the start. No, not the start of the course, but just the start of this okay, obstacle. Got you. Yeah. Okay, Tobo's just creeping up on Nikolai. I feel like this is going to be... Will it? Do you reckon it will just go down to a mistake? Who makes the, the mistake first? Or I think at this point they know this course so well, so I'm not sure if there will be any mistakes. But if, yeah, that will cost them the, the top of the podium today. But this is a very close race. Right, Nikolai is sprinting ahead. I think this is the fastest I've seen anyone yeah. run he from the uh, torture such a chain fast guy. the river. He's yeah. like a gazella. Now, let's talk about the, the, the water's effect, especially its temperature on the body. So, in and out, freezing cold water, what impact did that have on you yesterday? And what impact will it have on these lot today? I think the difference between what I experienced yesterday and today is that they actually have been in this a lot today. They've been in here four times before. They have to go up to reheat, and I'm not sure if they can actually manage that in the hour between the heats. So, um, I think they're not starting fresh uh, on this final today. Okay, and they've got a climb. You've, not only have you got to go through freezing cold water, but you've got to climb over the logs as well. And you can, and this water is so uh, muddy and no, not muddy, but you can't see through it. So you can't see if you are hitting a rock or whatever's in front of you. So um, you have to watch out while you're running really fast. This is so close between first and second here. And obviously at any moment, third and fourth can, can just come through just yeah. as easy. Um, right, now we're going to load the cannons. Um, well, Nikolai uh, is about to load the cannons here. Now, what's this? Um, I'm not sure they can actually load the cannon because this is a 69 kilos um, Atlas stone that you have to drag along the course. You can roll it and then you have to pull it over some trees. Has it not got heavier from yesterday as well? These, like, whoever comes up with these, they're <laughs> cruel. They've made it even harder. I know. No, no, I think the, uh, the load the cannon was the same as yesterday, but I know some of the other heavy uh, obstacles, they've gotten even heavier than got yesterday. You. Okay. Right, so they've got they've literally got a roll. Yeah, you can over. see they do it front side and we I think we'll see later on that the women will drag them with the yeah. Okay, and on the other side. Right, it is time for dragging the horse and these have definitely got heavier. Uh, yeah. So the idea is they've got to this slide now this. Fifty kilos today, yeah. All What's the, the best technique when it comes to this? Is Nikolai doing it right here? Yeah, I think because he, he's tried it uh, uh, different techniques yesterday and today and uh, yeah, I, I've seen that this is the best. Uh, overall from all right. of the competitors today okay. you can see he's right behind him they are yeah they want to win this one today it's not all only the first prize it's yeah. like 10,000 kroners it's a trip to wow. Oslo for the Red Bull 400 competition all paid next year so that's so all up for grabs yeah okay we're going to go on to the water hole uh, they've got a walk or they can swim through the long creek um, it's going to be on the way Nikolai's going to hit that first um, and we just got over halfway as well. Nikolai uh, is in the lead. To bowl is second. Uh, Cecilia, at this point, it must be going through their heads, that finish line, and wanting to win. Well, they can almost see it and almost smell it from here. So, yeah, I'm, I think that uh, yeah, Nikolai, can, when he looks back, he, yeah, I think he saw Tabo was right behind him. So he, needs, he knows that he really needs to put his A game into this one now. These though, are literally side by side away yeah. from each other. Look at this. You can see they look tired. They, they look shattered. Yeah, they ran 16 kilometers already. So they got four more. So that's 20 kilometers in two days. Wow. This is normally an obstacle course race will be around five to 12 kilometers. Um, but uh, this short course is all about going again and again and again. So it's actually 20 kilometers. We forget as well how hilly this event is. You're up, down, yeah. up, down, running over bridges. And now they're going to come up to the siege. Now, not only uh, have they got to climb over the wall, they've got to use a the ladder. They've got to pick up the ladder themselves to get over yeah. the wall. Uh, the ladder's not that heavy, but the, the thing about the ladder is that it's... Um, it's not easy to run with because it's not stable at all. And we see Nikolai is already there. Oh, he's right behind him. These two are so close. This may be the closest yeah. <laughs> race we've seen. You so can far. see that he's running so fast. He knows that Thibaut is right behind him. Wow. They're not allowed to use each other's ladders. They have to bring their own. So now they have to load this catapult with a stone. They have okay. to go over the line over here. 
Oh, oh. so they've got to throw it over the line with the cap. Oh, they are yeah. literally doing this at the same time. Yeah. Nikolai's just okay. got his over the line and into the lake. You saw that he was face. running before he even knew if the stone was over yeah. the line. That was the chance to take. But uh, yeah, right now it really comes down to who's the fastest swimmer. This is they so, are close. so close. And you can see all the people cheering on the other side. Yeah, this is getting real. I think this is the closest race. You've yeah. Had. And that, I feel like that always happens in the final as well. They know. Like they both give it them know now. all now. This is their best. Right, Tabo is really catching up on Nikolai here, isn't he? So it is about the swimming just as much as the running. Right, we're now going to go over to Dave. And also we've got the key coming up. Right, Dave. I'm on the shoreline. You can probably hear the atmosphere, the fans supporting the guys. Nicolo is getting ahead, but he is absolutely putting every limb, every bit of energy he has. He can see it. He can taste the victory. However, right behind him, Thibaut is catching up. The swimming really comes into play as they go under the last bit of the wrecks. It seems like there's only two men left but they have to get the key and they have to break that castle wall and get in and plant the flag nikolai right now getting to the end about to climb out his last bit of the water the crowd are going wild he throws the key in he's away up into the next obstacle Thank you, Dave. <laughs> this is so close. Um, also, Jonas has just come out of nowhere. Um, and he's about to do the keys. And they'll be right behind our two leaders. Right. This is the barracks. Cecilia, what happens here? They have to climb over the wall. They can use the rope to get up there. Uh, it's, it's not a difficult obstacle itself. But when you have a cold forearm and you're tired, this might be really, really uh, hard to get over. Um, but I think the key, that was a fun, uh, fun new fun obstacle. We haven't it, seen yeah. that before. I think uh, to both find that a bit hard. He had to go down twice on that. Right, as you can see here in the picture, this is the labyrinth. Uh, pretty much a super confusing maze. It is, uh, but the thing is that you can only run 10 meters in the wrong direction before you know that this is a dead end. Okay. But that 10 meters right now, with them so close. That's winning, that's first and second, isn't yeah, it? That yeah, that might be it. That's first and second. It might come down to that as well. Right, so they got to grab the flag here as well. Is there any chance, Cecilia, what do you reckon? Can Tibo catch? Uh, Nikolai, is there a chance? Well, if Nikolai's choosing the wrong direction, that might be his chance. But uh, for now, it's just like run like you've never run before. This has got to be a sprint right to the finishing line. Are they thinking about the finishing line now as well? You know it's in their head. You know that it's a 10,000 kronos. It's the trip to Oslo for the Red Bull 5 400. And uh, you know that the top of the podium, that's what counts. This is so close. They are literally <laughs> 10 steps behind each other. This is the closest race we've seen all this is weekend amazing. by far. So one wrong turn, Cecilia. That and it's completely... And you know that your competitor is right behind you. He'll see that that's the wrong direction, so he'll catch up. And in the maze as well, the fact that you can't see him right behind you, is that playing on your mind as well? I believe it is. You just have to... This is the place where you really have to focus on your own game. Forget everything else. And at this point, being so close to winning it, how is exhaustion playing a part in this as well? I don't think you feel it. It's just you the don't. adrenaline kicking right, in. Okay. They just picture themselves knocking down that the last door and plant the flag. Right, the castle doors are coming up. Can Nikolai take this or will Tabo come back and get first place? Nikolai is right near you the end of the maze as well. This is They are going so fast. I, I'm not sure we've seen anything like this we, before today. We haven't. I think this is a great example. Cecilia, what do you reckon of, of OCR? Is this what it's about? This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. You know, in Nikolai's head right now, I, I would love to be in his head right now. What do you think he's thinking? This is the last turn and he's there. One last turn and he has won uh, the Red Bull Conquer the Castle. Nikolai, will he do it? He just has to go through <laughs> the castle doors. He's so, so close as well. Oh, oh, I can't wait to see who's, who's, who's going to be. To bow we on Nikolai. We just need to go through the castle doors. He's got, to, he's got to carry the flag as well, hasn't you he? You can see him there. He's got to carry he's the got flag. He's got to kick it. Yeah. He's kicked it through. Our favourite. So he's just going to plant the flag, and that's and it. He, and then he's won. Nikolai he's needs won. to plant the flag. He's just gone through the rebel side. Can he do it? And yes, <laughs> we have our men's winner.
Nikolai Dam has won. And you predicted that, Cecilia? I, well, he was a very good candidate for that one. And he's such a nice guy. Right, Dave is at the finish line. I am here right now. And Nikolai, oh my goodness, congratulations. <laughs> Five long laps in 24 hours. Has this been the most victorious win you've ever had? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I had a plan from start to you know, go kind of you know, uh, strategic in the first uh, round, sir, and it went pretty good, I think. And I thought I had some extra uh, you know, gear for the finals, and I had. So, uh, but it was so hot and tense. Well, the Tibo was really pushing me a, a lot. So I had a really hard time, but I managed to go through, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy about it. So, yeah, for sure. Well, congratulations. Listen, catch your breath, enjoy the celebrations, but to you and to Thibaut and to everyone, huge congratulations. And amazing congratulations, Nikolai. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Cecilia, see, you know your stuff. You predicted that. Well, I know that Nikolai, this was one for him, yeah. 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 And did you think it was going to be that close? No, not at all. Really? It was really close. We've seen it earlier today that Nikolai and Leon was side by side when they crossed that finish line. So yeah, maybe yeah, but um, this and was very exciting. And how would and how would it feel um, to Bo being a Belgian winning it in, in Denmark? <laughs> that would no, we wouldn't like that. We want a Danish winner. And just coming through the castle as well, we have, I believe, Jonas. Jonas is coming through the castle, third place. He's got himself on the podium. There he is. I mean, you still got to be here. This is a huge yeah. achievement. A huge achievement. There's some really nice prizes for number one, two, and three, and you still get to get, get on the podium. I think fourth, you've been doing so good all day. You've been winning all your heats and then have, coming yeah. in fourth. Of course yeah. you have. I mean, they're all winners, but look at that. Jonas, I mean, the exhaustion on their face. And you the just, the number four is just missing the spot on the podium. Yeah. That yeah. must be, that must be hard. That's got to be hard. Yeah, as a racer, I mean, it does happen. I'm, I'm sure you've been in a position where you haven't been on the podium each time. Um, have you got that through, through your mind when you're finishing off the race as well and you know everyone else has? Well, I've never been in a race where we were only four competing each oh, other. Final, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, you, you always learn from a race. Then you have to go back and then work on your weaknesses. Okay, awesome. Um, so we are going to now go to Dave, who uh, I believe is going to be at the starting line for the women's final. Okay, so our warrior <laughs> ladies are insane. ready to take on <laughs> this incredible. incredible course. In red, we have Annika Runikaf, Mahraid Langhoff. In yellow, we have Ida Matilia Stonesguard. In orange, and of course, in purple, Julia Alexandra Van Hansen. It's going to be an incredible race. I'm literally excited after watching the men. It's going to be sensational. On your Thank marks. you, Dave. Yes, right, uh, the women's final is starting now. Um, they right, are so off to a strong start. Exact same obstacles as the men. Yeah. Um, and again, it's there. they've got to that build the barricade to start off with, right? Yeah, but that's actually the thing about the obstacle course racing. It's, exact, it's always exactly the same obstacle for women and men, even okay. the heavy ones. That's, so, that's uh, yeah. yeah that's so these good. are some uh, really good women out there. All these four as well. I saw Judy yesterday. She was, as you, as you saw earlier with Dave, she was doing some of the um, demonstrations. Yeah. So quick. Yeah. They move quickly on their feet, these girls. So quick. Yeah. Um, right. We have already got two leaders here. So even building a barricade is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough task in itself. Yeah. They're going to knock down a large pack right here. And they're doing that pretty fast. I can't see who's behind. But they, yeah, they're off all of them. Okay, and then it's straight onto the rope. Uh, they've just done the rope. Um, and currently, the leaderboard is Annika first. She's a very fast runner. Yeah. And yeah. That's, and that's she what you're she predicting. Yeah. Actually, I think she'll do really good this time. But I, th I saw that she was struggling on the, the wings early on. So uh, yeah. let's see when they get to that. Did you say as well, Annika was the, um, she used to be a mountain climber? No, that's uh, the climber is uh, actually McGrady. McGrady, yeah. okay, she was yeah, here yeah. earlier, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she'll do, do very good on the wings. She's been fine all, all through the others. Okay, 
Right, so coming up, we have, we sorted a men's final. If you just joined us, we have the battlefield uh, coming up too. Now, the idea of this is they got to crawl and climb through a 50 meter long passage of mud, swamp, and bushes. And when we say swamp, uh, like Cecilia did yesterday, you can get stuck. Yeah. I know all about that, but I can say, say that uh, for Annika, this is where she'll take the lead. This okay, is where how comes? Because she's the fastest runner there, uh, so this is where she'll she'll take her time to or, or move away from her competitors, and this is where she she'll do the best, right, I believe. Okay. She'll need that if she's yeah got this to struggle with the wings again okay. later on. So the mud is an important factor here to, to bear in mind. Uh, and then after the battlefield, you have the forest, um, which is, is, you know, it's, it's a general forest, but it's a very technical route because it's covered with fallen trees. There's rocks in there and there's sharp corners as well. So, you know, how was this for you yesterday, the forest? It's very technical. Uh, it's a very technical trail to run. So you have to uh, yeah, run fast, but you really have to look out when you do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look back uh, at the men's final um, whilst uh, the women are going through the forest yeah. right now. Uh, here we go. Here's the men's final. So started yeah. off uh, again, same as the women's. And then we went to the treetops. And this is where Nikolai, you know, really started to, to build his lead here. Yeah, I believe he did good on that one. And then, yeah, he got the confidence to take an even stronger lead. So quick as well. And then level. As you went into the, the the wings, and then Nikolai again took the lead with the logs as he went up. But what we saw is that they were pretty fast swimmer, all of them. So yeah. uh, they were close. It on didn't that. feel like there was a time for to bowl to catch up. No, not at all. Because Nikolai just didn't let it slip. The only chance he would have was in the maze, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And can you mem can you memorize that maze after you've done it a few times? No, not at all. Oh, yes. No, not at all. And actually, every time you have to to turn in any uh, direction, you'll have to stop and have a quick look. So it's like you have to run fast, but you'll stop just for a second. Okay, got yeah. you. And then this has just been added in, the keys for the final. So how does this work? You have to dive down, uh, to pick up a key uh, and uh, at the bottom of this lake. Got you. Yeah, and it's very cold, remember that? Can you see anything when you're... Not at all, I can't even see from here. We can see the lake and I can't even see like the... the the trees down there yeah. at all? No, not at all. Got you. Uh, and then I had to climb over the barracks here and the maze. And at this part, it was just ridiculously close. I think it's actually funny that you can see the flag moving around yeah. in there. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see what you was going know, on. Yeah, yeah I and like that. And then there we go, Nikolai. Yeah, look at that face. A very proud man. Yeah. That's a, that's a happy winner. That is a happy winner. <laughs> then he's got a part with Dave being yeah. in his face with the microphone. Um, so uh, we are moving on to the pillory now. So the pillory, the idea is they've got the same weight as the men as well. They've got to put yeah. a heavy wooden pillory on the, the back same weight, carry yeah. it uh, exactly. back and forth for 30 meters. Yeah, and what's funny is that you can see that McGrath is now in the lead. So they changed a bit. So yeah. uh, that's our climber. And uh, Ida Matilda is fourth at the, this point. Uh, hey, she's our favorite. She's our favorite. So um, as I said, anything can happen. Has she got a lot of pressure on her, do you think, to win today? Like yeah. you said it's your favorite. Does she know that she's the favorite as well? I, I'm well, she, she knows that. And I know that um, the mental game is strong here for all of them. And I know that being an underdog sometimes is easier. I'm not saying that any of these are underdogs because these are some four really, really cool girls and really professionals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think that's a big problem. Right. Um, in the field, uh, we have Dave OC. Dave, you there? Yes, I'm down here by the treetop walking section, which is kind of an underdog in terms of obstacles because although it looks easy and maybe the height and the fear of the height might not scare you, it's still slippy, it's still wobbly. And of course, the biggest thing we saw, and maybe it was a tactic earlier, but Thibaut left a gap between himself and Nikolai to make it balance out. However, earlier on with the women, we saw them running together and that throws you completely off. You're using someone else's shake, someone else's bounce, and it definitely makes it a bit more of a technical and difficult obstacle, but it is 100%, without a doubt, one of the most spectacular obstacles here at Red Bull Conquer the Castle. Awesome. So, um, yeah, we just heard there Dave talk about a tactic that um, Tabol was using about leaving, leaving some room. 
Yeah, and so I'm not sure that's a good idea. I didn't think that because isn't no, it going to be the same time difference anyway? I think you should never leave room in an obstacle course race because, as you saw, they were so close and anything can happen. And no, you would just have to push yourself forward. Okay, do yeah. you think if he didn't leave room, it would have been even more closer? Might have been because he's been uh, making it more difficult for Nikolai to run if he's been on the same yeah. bridge because these are not stable. They are moving uh, when you run across them. Yeah. This women's race is extremely close. I mean, at this point in the men's, there started to be quite a gap between the top two and, yeah. and the bottom two yeah, as well. Yeah, at this point in the women's, you can see that they are all four changing places all the yeah. time. So, uh, yeah, this is very close. Do you think it's going to come down to the wings? It might be the wings, but it might be the swimming again. I know that uh, Annika is doing really good, and I, I think she's finally found her way through th the cold water because she's been struggling earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, okay. and not Different. making the podium just because of the cold no water. Way. Yeah. So, but uh, she she found something to to do with that. She bought some neoprene sleeves, and oh, yeah. uh, she said that kept her warm. Okay, right. We are going to go back to Dave at the treetops. Dave. Okay, so I think. The ladies are about to make their way to the treetops. I'm pretty excited to see what the kind of positions are, how their leads are. In earlier rounds, we saw some, some people separate from others. In the men, we saw them really close. I can hear them coming. They're fast approaching. Let's enunciate on the fast approaching. approaching. They are by no means taking their time. I'm not sure who's in front just yet. They're about to peek out true the trees but i think it looks like annika is up ahead how far not very much Ida matilda so close behind and definitely that's going to throw annika off her balance see right now as Ida enters right as annika comes off and here she goes in to the spiral staircase section oh my goodness this part is crazy and you can see right now it's fast it's catching up the other two ladies are not far behind. It's not in the bag. It's early days today. As Annika goes by, nothing but determination. A true warrior. As speaking of one, here comes Eden now. It's concentration in the face as she runs off. Let's see, two more ladies coming down. We've got Mahred and we've got Julia swiftly following. Cheers, Dave. Um, right, this is so close. This is so close. Going into the well next after the treetops, um, which again, just to uh, remind you, has been changed since earlier this weekend. Uh, so you have to climb inside and up through a narrow well. Um, so is it? Does it help being tall or smaller in this one? This one is definitely helping to be small, and you can use the rope in there, but you can use your feet a little bit if you're not too too high. So okay. yeah, that helps a lot. But they did take out. There were some steps. There were some steps so in there earlier or yesterday. Uh, they removed them. So um, they'll have to use only the rope and their feet. But you can see these girls, they are all fighters and neither of them have given up the, the top podium by now. You can see Annika's... This is so close. Yeah, it is just behind her. Annika's first into it. And um, yeah, it's still anyone's game. Anyone's at this game. Point. All four at this point, I think, could win. Or come in any, it, it, all four could get a podium position. Well, sure. We can't call it yet. Um, right, Julia, we just see. We've got a bit running, uh, there's a part where they have to run now, and I think that's uh, Annika's strength. Yeah. So um, let's see how that goes. A bit, of a, a bit of a distance as well before they get to the shield. It's all about building that distance now. And I think the later in the day it goes on, the, the, the shield people are going to get more and more grumpy <laughs> and more and more tough. <laughs> So um, they won't go easy just because won't. these are ladies. They no, don't. not at all. I no. saw it yesterday. Yeah. I saw it yesterday. They almost went even harder. <laughs> right. So um, we are going to give you the leaderboard as well. Now, our favorite um, is on top, Cecilia. Yeah, we have Ida Matilda in front now and Annika just behind. We have Magrede in the far back. But Magrede is, uh, is shown, has shown earlier that she's really good with the wings. So let's see okay. how that goes. Right, we are coming up to the wings. We're getting very close. Um, so out of these four, let's go. Who's the best at the wings? Um, I would say Magrede and Ida is equally good. Okay, so them, they, them two should find it 
a bit easier we're saying or yeah in the semi-finals we saw that uh, Annika she was struggling and she had a good uh, lead in front of Magreda but she catched up on the uh, on the wings earlier today okay and in OCR if you've done the wings before and you, you fouled and you couldn't get up there the first That's time or the second time how big is the mental game? That's yeah. very big. I know that's that's definitely in the any cassette right now. I know that Eden uh, McGrady they know they can do this, so that they build the confidence. So that's uh, yeah. To get out there, yeah. Drake and I use the same technique each time. Exactly, so exactly. Work. Okay, cool. Uh, now we're seeing our favourite just grow a little bit more in the lead here. Yeah, I uh, know that. I think Annika will catch up on this part because this is the running part. Okay, got you. Still, still super close. <laughs> right, they are going through the shield as we speak. So the grumpy shield men. As you can see here, uh, it might be a good idea for Annika to let Mat Ida Matilda go first, because then she'll get all the attention from the grumpy guys, and she might be able to sneak around. Do you think? Maybe. So in, in OCR, is every single obstacle, there's a different kind of technique, and you have yeah. to think about everything. Exactly. That's yeah. how it is. And you always have to keep calm and uh, yeah, be strong in your mental game. Got you. Right, um, we can see the wings. You can see it on your screen. You see the forest there, just to, just in the middle of that. You can see the wings. Now the wings, you have to climb over a 2.3 high wooden wall with a ledge on top. Now, what is the best technique to do this? This is not just a climb. If you could just reach directly up, it would be much easier, but yeah. it's like a plateau and you have to jump a bit back to grab the plateau to get a good grip and Pull yourself over. Okay, so this could be our deciding obstacle um, in the women's finals. Who goes over this first, will we yeah. say, could be our winner? Yeah. Okay. Well, mm, let's not say that yet because they still got the swim as well. Yeah. Okay, um, they're approaching the wings as we speak. This is a really important part of the women's final. So tough as well. I tried it yesterday. Um, <laughs> And it was super, super hard. So this is what I happened. tried it yesterday too, and, and I think by now it's very muddy on top. That's what happened last see, time see, in the previous have heat. Yeah. Annika struggling again. It's not giving up. It's not easy, is it? She knows she can do this. She just got to believe in herself when you do it. That's actually half of the obstacle. If you go to an obstacle and you do not believe that you managed to get over it, then you can't go to get over okay. it. Yeah. How did you find this yesterday when you did the wings? I think it was it was hard. It was oh, a hard one, yeah. yeah. Okay. And 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 I think when you've tried it before, you know you've failed it a couple of times. It's even harder. Mm. You're building the distance toward getting over it. Got you. Um, so we are going to the wings shortly. Um, let's just go for the leaderboard. If you've just joined That's us, changed the women's a bit. final it has changed a bit. Yeah. You see that Annika is now stuck on the wings, that Ida Matilde is uh, far ahead, and actually Julia is now closing in on Ida. Okay. So that's a new one. Julia, you know, we did the demonstration yesterday with Dave, and she found the wings pretty easy. Yeah? Almost, yeah. I didn't see her go, go over it right now, but really? I, I, I'll say that she did it fast because she catched up with uh, Ida. So yeah, now and McGrady is slowly moving toward them. Yeah, Julia's in the lead as well right now. Um, now this is a uh, fun one. This is a fun one. Yeah. They got to grab the, the it's grappling the hook. Now again, this has changed. It was just a rope. Now it's um they've got to throw it over. Yeah, they have the hook. They have to attach that to the the top of the wall and climb over. Yesterday you could just climb a rope. I think actually that is uh, Julia going over now and Ida still still trying to get it over. Still trying to yeah keep calm, not losing it. She'll know that this is, um, it's very important that she, you really wow. keep she's telling yourself, I can do this, this is manageable. She's still struggling. This could be a very big moment in this women's final. That's I mean, why once you've thrown it over yeah. a few times, are you getting in your head now? It sure will. And uh, I think the most important part will be when she see Magreda just behind her. That's when you got, yeah, you're all stressed okay. out. So this is actually what I said before about the race is not over until it crosses the finish line because Magreda was a bit behind before. But now she's actually closing in on the ladies. Okay, well, Julia's in the lead at the moment. Uh, her mum's at this event at the moment. As Sorry? well, her mum's at the, uh, the event yeah, at the moment really? as well. Yeah, <laughs> she was saying Julia as a kid was just that child that was always on the swings, jumping over the swings, jumping, hanging on the monkey bars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can say that about all these girls. Yeah, okay. So They are not lady girls. They are like cool, yeah, uh, yeah climbing around girls. So now you can see Annika's moving as well. It looks like she got over it. 
Okay, she's got over and she's going. Um, currently, they're now doing the log swim. You saw the men do this earlier, so they've got to throw the log in the freezing cold lake, yeah. go around the red wall sign and back up the hill, and then they're on the torture chamber. Yeah, we saw that they were using different techniques. We saw that the, um, Margrethe actually put the log between her legs. Yeah, so why yeah. would they do that? I think it, to make it an easier swim. She can move easily in the water, but um, let's see if that works out now. Okay. So Julia's in the lead, she's just got the log out and now she's making her way to the torture chamber. This is one of Julia's stronger ones. She did this yesterday, um, I saw her do it and she just flew through it yeah. like it was nothing. I think this is the fifth time they'll be there, so it might not be as easy as it okay. was the first time, but uh, they're tired by now. They have to be tired. You can see that the swimming is, 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 is slowing down as well, but uh, Ida's coming out of the water and it's right behind her, so you can still catch up. Now, Ida's upper body strength, is that, she's, she's got a strong upper body strength? Yeah, she's one of the strong girls, so uh, like the um, load the cannon, that's an easy one for her. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Got you. you can see Julia just making her way to the torture chamber here. Now the torture chamber looks like a cage from above. If you can get a shot, but it's basically got things hanging down, uh, like ropes and different bells you got to go on to. Exactly, um, and, and different your way. grips that you'll have to just hold on to to move forward. And again, in a women's final, you can't touch the ground. No one is allowed to touch the ground. Okay. This is what this is all about. So you see, Julia, she'll yeah. swing her legs up and she'll just move forward real quickly. Okay, yeah, she's making her way through. Not as quick as yesterday, but no. I'm assuming that's because, you know, she's done it so they many times tired. today. Yeah, they must be shattered. And actually, if your forearms now are really cold, this, yeah. this is a difficult one to do. Why is that, though? Because you have to use your, your strength and your, gri your grip strength is in your forearms. And you can't do that because it's cold. Yeah, the muscles exactly. Pay. I'm with you. Right, yeah, Julia is finding this a lot more difficult than yesterday. That's because we've changed it as well. Yeah, and I think she's tired by now. She's cold by now. I'm not sure they reheat uh, between the, the heats today. So um, I think what we see here is a tired professional obstacle course racer. Mm. And Ida is just behind and she's just about to start now. Uh, we have our top two right now. She's real quick on the obstacles. Let's see if she yeah, can. She is, yeah. Close in really on Julia quick. now. Really quick. You can see she's moving a lot quicker than Julia did. This is one of her favorite obstacles. I know she is really good on, on Ricks. Knowing we're just over halfway, is now Julia thinking, you know, I wasn't necessarily a favorite for this. Now I'm in the lead. What mindset has she got to go into finishing this race now? She'll just want to increase that lead and she'll just keep pushing, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got you. She's not a winner yet. Right, we're moving on to the river. Now, how did you find this river yesterday? You were saying that it's, you know, you don't know what you're stepping on, the pebbles. Yeah, exactly, and, and you can't see through it. So you have to be careful, but you have to run really fast because this is, yeah, important. Especially on your ankles. I mean, it's not a flat they ground. They got strong ankles. So you know, oh, they yeah, have, yeah. okay. Because you never know exactly what you're stepping on. Right, so let's just go through the leaderboard one more time, Cecilia. So uh, first we have Julia. Yeah. Then Ida second. Yeah. Then third and fourth. Yeah, we have Magrede in, in the back and then Annika still number four. Well, okay. Yeah. Right. She's going to run really fast now. Yeah. yeah. She knows it. Um, right, we're going to go over and load the cannons now. Um, yeah. Now, the women's finals, they do it a bit different than the men's. I think they'll uh, move backwards when they, they pull the, the cannonball back and forth on this. Uh, Why course. is that? Mm, it's it's very heavy at 69 kilos. It's the same as the men, and the women do not have necessarily the same strength okay, as the men. So that's an easier way to get around. But it's just a different technique for them. To yeah. Use, yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, after loading the cannons as well, we're going to have uh, dragging the horse. Now, has everyone got the same technique when it comes to dragging a horse? I believe so. Kay. We'll have to see see about that. But I think yeah. Can you see now, Ida Matilda is really closing in really on, uh, on Julia. And Magrede is still moving steady but fast towards them. Okay. And this still could change any time. It's very exciting, actually. Super yeah. exciting. <laughs> I mean, every obstacle it will be great for one person and more difficult for another. I would say that the, 
a track like this it will be either Matilda's uh, force but um, I haven't seen Julia before but she's doing pretty good here we go we can see yeah. her right now as she is dragging the horses and we can see Ida as well just over there behind this is very see, close as that. well you can tell just the, the muscles are being used right now this is extremely close this is, I guess it's closer than the men's at this point I know that Ida at this point is very focused. She's uh, she's not a quitter. No. She's a fighter. She's looking very tired here though, but she's still powering through. Look how fast that goes. I believe she she believes that she can catch her yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah. This is getting very very close, similar to the men's final, what? I believe. Something is happening. Something she's has happened. Going back. Ida has gone back. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the officiating. This could be very very. This could be extremely handy for Julia. Oh, the shoot. Okay, so... It must have been some fit. The, it might the, be because uh, early on you just have to take it one way. I don't know if they... Okay, I'm confused now. Okay, I don't really know what's happening here, but this can't be good for either. I don't know what is happening here. The officials have got involved. Okay, this she is not good. That, yeah. The, she did do that. That's quite confusing because she did take it over the line. I know. That's the idea. This is really important because if something like this happens in the game, you might actually lose your mental game. I wonder why that. So in OCR, is the officiating really strict? Yeah, normally, yeah, because they, they are the, the rules. They know the rules and they have to, to tell you exactly what you have to do and when. But it's like the instructions there. There was something mixed up, and I don't, don't know. But this uh, definitely gave Julia a really good lead. And now will Julia be thinking, because she, ha she didn't see that, will she be thinking, oh, OK, I've got a much bigger, you know, kind of position now than I thought. Well, I she's running around in corners now, and I'm not sure if she can see Ida. I'm not sure if she not even, even know, knows how out. close she is. No. OK. But you can see that Ida's moving. Yeah she, yeah, she lost a bit there. Coming up, we have the siege as well. But um, hopefully we can get a little replay on what exactly happened in that situation with Ida and dragging the horses. OK, so that all looks great. Pushing it through. Got to get it over that line there. You can see on the screen, her left foot's just about to touch that line. Um, and she's going to drag it through. So I don't know exactly what was wrong with that. Um, oh. But um, I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, she's just climbing up. Okay, she's just the got bank by bank, now. She's yeah. just got to get back in the game and focus on moving forward. Right, and Julia, up with Julia is coming up on the ladder now. Uh, we've I've just been told the penalty was that uh, Ida was moving sideways, not backwards. Oh, she's not allowed to do that. And you can't do that. Oh, yeah. okay, that's it. Oh, that's not good. Right, we can see Julia behind us here in the studio. She's about to get on a catapult. That's a treat of the day. You have to put it in a little hole up there and then you have to throw it over the line over here. And I think that's... Oh, she's got it down there. <laughs> okay, Anything that's a new else? one. That is new. Oh, that and was it's by over. That was a far. great shot by Julia there. Yeah, she's in the water. And now in the water. Julia and swimming. Okay, you know yeah. Well, I haven't swimmer? seen before, but I can tell that she's a good swimmer. She's moving fast forward. Okay, and Ida is closing up right just behind her. Yeah. And Ida as well, do you know if she's a good swimmer? Cause she, yeah, she's a pretty good swimmer, but um, yeah, I can see that she's struggling now. It's right. not, it's just, yeah, it, this is getting into her head. What, the penalty, do you reckon it's playing on her head? Yeah. Right, so we're going to go back over to Dave OC, who is just on the bank. Okay, so I am right here on the forefront of the last bit of swimming, the Rex. But the key to this, ironically, is the key. You have to capture the castle key at the very end of this running. And the thing about this swim is this water, not only is it cold, but it's very dark, it's difficult to see. To find that key is going to be an absolute nightmare. Julia right now is in a good lead. However, Ida is fast catching up and fast behind her as the crowd give her some support, searching for that key, diving down, getting really stuck in and involved. But she gets it, I think, by the looks of it. Maybe not, maybe it's a rock. Going down one more time and this just shows you have to have a strong mentality. You have to show initiative in the moment. It becomes so intense and we can see Ida's actually catching up. So this is how crazy OCR really is because Ida is right hot on her heels. 
as Julia is still searching for that key. It looks like she's got it. The crowd are getting excited as she comes up, taking that luck back right there, making sure she still had the distance, which she does. Coming up, exiting the water. Julia is so close, but it's never over till it's over. She throws the key, going on to one of our last obstacles. Ida is still here searching for the searching for the key, my apologies, which is exactly the same issue that Julia had. Those keys are not easy to find. You can't see anything. The water's murky. It's dark. It's an extremely big challenge. Ida's got so much support. She's so focused. I'm so interested to see how much that has affected her, her setback from going sideways. But yeah, it's, an, it's a crazy one, Reese. herself first place what do we think cecilia because ida is I, still not got out the lake i think that was the, the she's uh, not one to catch now no i don't think so i think ida and uh, Margrethe they'll be running for second place now and in third place uh, we have ida in second and Margrethe in, in third now this could be a battle in itself yeah it it will be because they they're running for some real nice prizes as well ida um, full of um, the lake water, all on her swimsuit there, and she's just going over uh, the barracks. So we, ac just we actually have Annika in the water now. She's uh, coming right after them. Wow. And Julia is in the maze. You can just see the flag. Um, I think, will Norway bring this home? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm uh, sorry to say, you. but I think they will. This is not a good one for us. This is a huge win for Norway if Julia can bring this home. She's here with her mother as well. Uh, both traveled from Norway here for this event. And I think if there's no issues with this maze, we could be looking at our women's final winner. Yeah, she's not reasonable at this time. She's, yeah, she's so, so much in front of the other ladies. So I think they'll be running for second and third. Second and third. Wow. Would you have predicted this before we, we, we started this? No. This was not what I would have guessed. Okay, Ida's in there as well. Still, this race is not over. I know I said that it's not over till it's over, but at this point, I don't think there's some difficult obstacles. To, really? Yeah. You think it's done? Yeah, I think this is, this is our winner we're looking at. Are we looking at a battle between second and third then? Because Annika's in there as well, or do you think Ida's got that much of a lead on? No, I think Annika's came, coming in fourth. Uh, Ida and Magrede, they are pretty close. They came out, oh, out of the water yeah, 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 uh, close to each other. They were struggling with the keys. I don't know uh, if it was much more difficult than the men's, but um, it, it took them some time. Okay, now Julia, it looks like we have our winner. She's just got to um, get through the castle doors after the maze. And we are looking at our women's final winner. I think it's going to be Julia. The crowd is pumped up. We are waiting for Julia to get through the castle doors. And we have our winner. We should see her on the screen in any time now. Norway will take it home in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Cecilia. I have to yeah, say I'm sorry too. <laughs> but it's okay. It's the best women today. Yeah. No, they've all been amazing she as well. Earned, she earned the, that. She We're going to see that. Julia break through the castle doors. All she's got to do is get through them doors, put that flag... Um, Put that flag through and she's won herself first place. She's right there. Oh, there she's she right is. There. Breaking through the doors, we have our women's final winner. Julia is going to win the race. Just needs yeah. to go through the Red Bull sign. There we go. What an amazing race she's done. <laughs> the smile on her face. She's through and she's won. Now we're going straight over to Dave EC who's going to chat to Julia. I am standing here with Julia, our new Red Bull Conquer the Castle champion. I tell you what, you traveled from Norway, you were the underdog, you just won. Feels so good. Woo! Well, I'll let you catch your breath, but huge congratulations. I cannot say how much respect I and I'm sure all the audience have for you.
Ida. Ida is coming in right now, claiming it, coming in second. It's a victorious moment. Unbelievable as the ladies give each other a high five and a hug. Ida, I have to say, first of all, huge congratulations. Second, I know you might have been coming out and looking for the win. Yes. What happened? What happened? I mean, those, I got a pretty bad start with the nails. I just, uh, yeah, I had to try five times or something. And then uh, the water caught up with me with the key. It was so hard to find. I was just like, there was only algae and sludge and all these things. I was like, what the? Yeah, but uh, I sprinted last in the maze. That was good. Honestly, I know it's second, but second is an amazing achievement. Yeah, so much respect from everyone here and congratulations. Thank you. There we go. We have our first and second place. Julia in with the lead and then Ida just behind. I feel like that penalty may have cost Ida first place. Might have, but... Closer first place, a closer yeah, finish. Yeah, I think she would have been closer to the first uh, Julie today, but uh, and I think that would have made it more interesting. Because then you, you, you actually believe that you can still catch up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, what a race. You've had the women's final just now. There we go. Third place, Magreda coming in. In third place. <laughs> She's just got herself a podium, a big oh. smile on her face. I mean, what a close race that was in the men's final. Um, and then we just had the women's final as well. There we go. Uh, and that was our men's and women's final. We have the prize given on the way for you soon uh, also. Now, I feel like the men's, we predicted. Yeah. Um, the women's final. Well, it's, it's what obstacle course racing is all yeah. about. You never know who's going to win. You never know what's a game changer. And actually, the key uh, seemed to be pretty hard today. Did, do you think that was because we didn't really get to see the key in action before the finals event? This is the first time they, they'll meet the key. And I think it was quite hard for them to find down there. It's cold and it's uh, deep and it's, yeah. So you just start by touch because you can't. You're not opening your eyes down the lake, are you? Like you I think there's a rope that you can follow, and the key will be attached to the rope at some point or something like that. So yeah, you can see, but you yeah. Yeah, because they both struggled with that. Felt like that. The our, our top two in the women's final. It looked like yeah. Right, they were, we're diving down. See, um, sorry, uh, we're just gonna see a, a recap of the women's final for you now. Uh, here we go. It all started off very close. I know Ida said she struggled with uh, the building barricade. Then it went on to uh, the treetops. See there, Julia's not in the lead there. No, as she's, yeah, they were going back and forth with the lead. And you see Annika is the lead here. Yeah. And she, yeah, I think uh, the, the wings won over her today. Yeah. And then you've got uh, the logs. And you're going over the river where Julia really started to take her lead here. And again, really did it justice. Um, now, dragging up the most controversial part of this final again. Now, we've been told you can't go sideways. And it doesn't seem like Ida's going to yes, go she's there. going to do that in a minute. There. So it's there that. You have it. Yeah, I think that's it. Which is interesting because yesterday, maybe it's because it's the amateurs, but oh, we saw loads of different ways that people were doing it. Tough definition there. Um, that's a really, yeah, that's a, that's a really hard penalty I, I think I feel. sometimes it's hard to be the official because uh, you have to take you have to make the call you know the officials are Danish yeah. either might be your favorite and still you have to say well yeah this was not okay and the cap uh, the catapult as well there we go into the keys which everyone seemed to struggle with yeah there we go Julia yes. took a long time in her keys and she jumped over the break and I think at this point we knew she knew she at this point, oh yeah. She? Okay, yeah. She could see that no one was right behind her on this uh, um, barricade. And are you still going? There we go. Right <laughs> That's a nice doors. picture. That's a great shot. And this is the best feeling. She conquered yeah. the guy, really. You what know, you like? left it all out there. You know that today that was just enough yeah. to get you on top of that podium. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Well, we have our winners and we have our podium in position. And we're going to go over to Dave uh, right now. Dave. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, it is time to crown our champions. This is the moment everyone has worked for, trained for and competed for. So ladies and gentlemen, if the athletes are ready, 
we will start with the men. In third place, Jonas Dresser. Giving each other hugs behind me is Jonas Dresser anywhere to be seen. There he is. Jonas, do you want to come up on the podium? The high one, right? All right, so Jonas Dresser putting in an awesome performance today as the ladies and gentlemen give him a round of applause. Thank you. In second place, we have Thibaut Debaucher. And our winner of the 2018 Red Bull Conquer the Castle, none other than Nikolai Dam. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the incredible athletes today. <laughs> Great. Okay, so this moves on to the battle we have just witnessed. It was sensational. Unbelievable performances by all the women, but there is only three who can make it onto that podium. And in third place, Margaret Langhoff Dusen. Now the fight for first and second was one of the most spectacular that has ever taken place. It came down to technicalities and searching for keys. But in second place, I am happy to announce Ida Matilda Stensgård. Now, this leaves one lady to stand on top of that podium. The underdog, some would say. Who knows, but all I know is she did some incredible stunts performing and racing today. In first place, the 2018 Red Bull Conquer the Castle champion, Julie Warhadson. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Mahraid, Ida, and Julia.
What an amazing fight. We had the men's and the women's and then champagne showers everywhere. Uh, Cecilia, did you have fun? Yeah, this was so amazing. Yeah? yeah. Thank you so much for being thank here you. with us. Um, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks to Dave OC as well, Cecilia Thompson. Uh, my name's been Bruce Parkinson, and this has been Red Bull Conquer the Castle. See you next year.